The John Muir Trail is a bucket list item that's not really a bucket list item. And the reason for that is that it takes up too much time. It's 211 miles and the reality is it's going to take the better part of the month to do between travel and hiking the trail. In 2023, I had quit my job and broke up with my girlfriend, and I decided to seize the opportunity. One of the first challenges to hiking the John Muir Trail is actually getting a permit. That being said, this year is different. The snowfall was 350% of a normal year. They think the last round of warm weather burned off about 20 something percent of what was up there. So, you know, maybe we're a third through now, but you, you know, that leaves you 60, 70 percent of the snow that's still up there. So there's still plenty of runoff to come. My great friend Ludo wanted to join me for the first part of the trail. So he was going to hike with me for a few days up to Mount Whitney and then return home. And then on the flip side, my trail kind of inspired my, my family and some of my extended family members to meet me in Yosemite. And so with that, I had 23 days to hike the John Muir Trail. I was in reasonably good shape-ish, and my attitude was that I was gonna get into shape with the trail. I'm, uh... I'm really in pain. While I approached the JMT from a fitness level, perhaps loosely, just from the from the realities of I didn't have much time to prepare, I do have a background in the outdoors. Okay, we're in uh, the fifth rappel. This is about 100 foot of uh, rappel. Ludo and I finally got to our campsite to set ourselves up for to start the JMT the next morning. Day zero, night zero, if you will. And you can see it on my face. I am just so excited, so content. I just have this overwhelming sense of gratitude. Here I am, I've got the opportunity to embark on this great journey, a trail that I never thought I would have the time to do. And Ludo's with me for the first couple days. I, I couldn't be any happier. We met a few other hikers who were starting the JMT, but my attitude was out of sync with the other campers there. Their anxiety, frankly, was a little bit contagious. I was trying to remove myself from the conversation, but I must have said something about my food resupplies. They were fairly vocal that uh, they were unhappy about the way that I, I was doing them. Uh, I, I, spoiler alert, they quit the JMT after three days and I ate the whole time. Just started the John Muir Trail. I'm about a mile in. What are your initial thoughts, Hugo? It's beautiful. I've been here in years. This trip came together so fast. One month ago, I did not know that I was going to be hiking the John Muir Trail. are so high because we haven't had to go uphill yet. First pass down. When we got to the first major water crossing, 
where we were supposed to cross was so deep and it was moving so fast we couldn't do it and so this began the process of just look up and down the river to see if you can find a reasonable spot to cross this is not the official water crossing uh, the official one is not passable which says something considering what we're doing right now we found multiple logs that had fallen and they seemed stable enough so we went for it. Yeah! He's got it. No Got to the top of, of here I didn't film because we were so wasted so what you're seeing now is an improvement from our first uh, for our first few minutes last pass of the day though it's a lot of miles it's starting to really end scenery is amazing The following morning, we left our campsite set up. I took half of Ludovic's weight and we hiked to the top of Mount Whitney where he was then going to leave me and then I could, I was gonna hike back down to our campsite to continue the John Muir Trail. Uh, we made it to Trail Junction, two miles to the top of Whitney. The current discussion is um, we need to bring an ice axe for the last two miles up to Whitney because if you don't have to, I think we're all at the point where uh, you just leave it. That's it, um, summited Whitney and Ludo and I went in two different directions. I told him to text me when he gets to the car, but I won't get it for several days. So that kind of sucks. Uh, I know I kind of feel like I messed up a little bit and like should have given Ludo an extra day through this these three days have been brutal on me too. If we just had an extra day, it's just everything is a bit calmer. Outside of that, um, man, I, I guess I'm starting the trail for real. Like this is how it's going to be, which is uh, is really exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm looking forward to the journey. Um, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I'm going to take it take it a little slow the next few days, and Ludo is pushing back. Um, uh, a resupply one day for me, which is perfect uh, to give myself a little bit more time to settle in with a, with a pack. But like altitude wise, uh, I'm loving it. I am sunburned everywhere. Anywhere there's exposed skin, I'm burned there. It's 
It's a little chilly this morning, really because uh, I'm camping at high altitude because I wanted this view. I arrived at Tyndall Creek and took a look at the water crossing. It looked really substantial. Um, one of the ways that I get these shots is that I take my camera gear, I drop, I drop my backpack, take my camera gear, cross the river, set my camera up, cross the river back, grab my backpack, and cross for a final time, which is this shot. Uh, so it's a bit of a process but it does have the advantage of giving me uh, kind of like beta, if you will, on the initial crossings with, without you know, a, a heavy backpack on. The, obviously the negative is that I have to cross three times to get the shot. It, I'm pretty close to in over my head. The water is raging and I just didn't realize how deep the crossing would be. It's nearly up to my waist at one point. Um, I get through it, but this was a really challenging water crossing. I've always been told that if you're going to be dumb, you better be tough. I think that applies here. Day seven. Uh, I am stoked. Um, this is the first day that I haven't felt absolutely terrible out here on the trail. Uh, after resupply day, the pack's heavy, doesn't matter. I've cleared a pass. I'm about to clear another pass. Feeling better. Oh, it is nice to feel better in the mountains. It only took seven days. <laughs> say sorry to Dane, my little brother. Um, he generously lent me his pack for this trip. And last night an animal ate a portion of the, of the back mesh. Uh, all my food was locked in a bear can. And um, yeah, basically I wanted to bring all this camera gear. So I busted a seam on my main pack. And I can't take my lightweight one, obviously. So my little brother generously lent me his. And I um, feel really bad that I've messed it up. Hopefully I'll be able to get it repaired. Sorry, Dane. Icy rain. And I think hail. Yeah, definitely hail. Right now, major concern is not to have snow this uh, I just want to get far enough down the mountain so that when the lightning strikes, I'll be in the trees. Martin making progress.
but uh, it's working for me. Cools me off. No sunburn. No mosquitoes. What a fantastic day. I'm cruising along, knocking out obstacles. I go up and over Muir Pass, spectacular views all along the way. Fast check. My feet are soaked. How am I doing? 10 out of 10, baby. There's quite a bit of snow, trail finding that's required, but it's fantastic. It's so, it's going so well, but I actually decide to camp up high to just soak in the, the views. I want a sunset and a sunrise. Um, even though it's a little chilly up there. There's not many people out on the trail this year, but you get two or three a day, and the talk is dominated by one subject, the bridge. The bridge is the South Fork River Bridge, which has been heavily damaged by the snow. I stumble upon a group of hikers that I that passed me the previous day. They're going in the same direction and they're looking defeated, which is clearly confusing me because they passed me with going quite they passed me going really fast. Um, and they have been informed that the bridge is going to get blown in less than 12 hours and there's no way for us to make it there. They're tight on time and so they can't use any of the detour options and are forced to quit the JMT. But here's the thing. I don't believe them. At this point, I've heard no less than six or seven different dates and times that the bridge is going to get blown. And we are deep in the wilderness. There's no cell phone reception. There's no data. This is like a limited information environment. Everybody's got to make their own decision, and I respect that. In my mind, it's a little bit disappointing if a strong group quit the JMT over false information. Regardless, I decided to keep mo moving. I'm looking for an adventure, and that's, I think I'm gonna find one today. Make them easy here in the Sierras. After the bridge, I was in need of one last resupply, so I headed down to VVR. It's a sanctuary for our hikers, a chance to get a shower, a meal, and I had mailed food there so I could restock. Made it to VVR, which means I made it to a shower and laundry. Yes. Kitchen's not open. They offered me a beer instead. It's very generous of them. So I was looking for a pretty quick turnaround at VVR. I wanted my food to feel like a human again and then to leave. The nature of the trail changed after VVR. There was no more snow, the water crossings were all mellow, and the high passes just weren't as high. Not to mention that I had been conditioned from rugged, adventurous terrain. And so the trail really changed from an adventure to a journey. Not to mention, it's beautiful. Descending into Yosemite, I was stopped by a hiker who asked me what the most difficult part of the trail was. He thought I was going to say the bridge, but that's not it. Even if you're not comfortable climbing across it, there are so many options around it that there, there's a solution for you. 
after thinking about it, I realized the most difficult part was having the grit to keep going and ignore the bad actors. That kind of attitude is poisonous, and worst of all, it affects others. Most people on the trail were absolutely amazing. They were crushing it. I met Topher, Riley, John, Heisenberg. Hey, this guy's nuts. Crazy. All backpackers who we were kind of leapfrogging back and forth, and it was great to meet them and, and feed off their attitude. I, I had so much fun whenever our, our paths crossed. To end on a high note, I wanted to climb Half Dome to end the trail. I've had the opportunity to climb Half Dome many times over the, over the years, and I felt like it would be a fitting end to the John Muir Trail. But here's the thing about Half Dome, it's really popular. I had applied for a long shot lottery permit a few days before I entered Yosemite, and I was talking to Heisenberg about it. He recommended that if the permit doesn't go through, that I should hitchhike. I was like, what are you talking about? Hitchhiking is on the road. There's no road that goes to, to the top of Half Dome. It's a hiking trail where people walk. He said, no, 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 you're not understanding. I needed to hike to the junction where Half Dome splits off from the JMT. Drop my big backpack and just carry a summit pack. And then ask a group of day hikers if they have an extra spot on their permit and if I could join their group for that portion of the hike. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You surround yourself with positive, solution-oriented people, and guess what happens? You get a solution. Thanks for watching. See you next time.